Welcome to the K-Drama Show. I'm Ashley. And I'm Kim. We're here to unpack your all-time favorite Korean dramas and chat about all the reasons that we find these shows so charming and so addictive. And we know you do too, so settle in with some ramen and a boba tea while we dive into the The K-Drama Show with Ashley and Kim. Episode 15. Episode 15. Do you want to catch us up for All right. episode 14? Um, okay, so I didn't really do a whole lot of like rereading of 14, but we ended last episode um, with Miso and Yongjun at Miso's apartment, and she's making ramen for him, and we learned that he doesn't know the different types of ramen, so she's like, we're going to make dumpling ramen. Yes. We could go on about ramen for hours. Way too long. <laughs> but we have... Miso sitting down next to Yeonjun on the couch and she ends up telling him that one of her dreams is to spend every night making dinner with her husband. She she gets this look on her face of like, did I just say that out loud? (laughs) Oops, my bad. She starts to get up and Yeonjun pulls her back down to the couch and he goes, well, I can make that dream come true. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want to be your husband. I want to be Miso's husband and go in for a kiss and we end with just the screaming objection <laughs> i have an room. objection to in regards to your marriage and it's miso's dad who'd been chilling in her bed this whole time first of all that's weird it's okay let's yeah so episode 15 it starts with his perspective a little bit of mm-hmm. just you know hanging out he'd been napping in her bed which i mean i don't know it is her dad, so it's kind of like, you know, when it's your kid. Yeah. But at the same time, that's such an invasion of personal space. Or like, at least let me know that you're coming over. Right, exactly. It, you're an adult. It's kind of weird. <laughs> just a, a good uh, courtesy to let let somebody know. Maybe it's a cultural thing. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. But poor Yeonjun, he is having a coronary. That's like an understatement. He, he is about to die. Yeah, he's choking on his own spit. So that is also where we begin yes. episode 15. So Miso is trying to figure out basically why he's even there to begin with. Mm-hmm. And he had gotten dismissed from the hospital a little bit early and the water ended up being out at his apartment. So he was like, I'll just hang out at Miso's apartment. And you know, now we've ended up where we are. But he kind of just rushes young June out the door and goes, we need to talk. We need to have a man-to-man a conversation. A man-to-man conversation. <laughs> and as Young Jun is being dragged out the door, she's like, call me. When yeah. he, basically, she like motions to him, call me when you're, you know, let me know you're alive. And he goes, get murdered. Okay, I'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> so they, Young Jun. I know. That would be terrifying, to be honest. But also, like, I feel like that's dad's complete right to be like, it's his job. Sure. What are you talking about? You want to marry my daughter? Yeah, what are your intentions here? Well, then they... They do. They go to this little restaurant. It's like a street street restaurant in a tent. And he is trying to just be like, okay, this is this is the reality. Why would you propose like that? That was a lame proposal. Well, he says, I'm greatly disappointed in you. Yeah. And it's not because you were alone with my daughter in her apartment, or thought you were. Mm-hmm. It's because that was the lamest proposal I've ever heard in my life. Why would you talk about letting your body <laughs> fill up with MSG? <laughs> How unromantic is that? Granted, he doesn't understand, like, why that means something between Yeonjun and Miso. Well, and the lengths that poor Yeonjun has already gone to to try mm-hmm. to get her on board with marriage. And, well, Yeonjun, he does kind of defend himself by saying, like, he didn't mean that, you know, they're just going to eat ramen like they're poor people, but that he wants to live simply and just right. love her forever kind of thing. Right. Her dad is like, she cannot be given away to such a half-hearted and lame guy. I mean, again, he doesn't know how much Yeonjun <laughs> has done already, but that's fair. And then I love that he's like, do you really intend to marry my miso? Mm-hmm. And Yeonjun's like, yes. And he goes, well, then propose to her again. I know times have changed, but romance still needs to be kept alive. I can't give my daughter to the lame and half-hearted guy. Yeah. And Yeonjun, he's not getting whiplash from this conversation. Yeah, he is, he is so on edge. Like, he is... He is creating these mergers between multi-million dollar companies, and mm-hmm. he doesn't bat an eyelash. But when it comes to discussing marriage with 
Misa's father, he looks like he just, he's so out of his element. He's so full of fear. (laughs) He's freaking out. Well, because then he's like, you know, okay, yeah, I can do that. And so her dad's like, all right, well, then let's drink. Yep. And he goes, one shot. They have several bottles of soju. Yes. Fast forward through, like, bottle number five well, or something. This, this, while this is going on, Miso is freaking out. Right? Because it's time is passing and she's thinking and she he's somewhere in a river dead. <laughs> yeah, My father like, has <laughs> bludgeoned him with a guitar. He is no longer <laughs> with us. Well, yeah, because she's like, did my dad scold him to death? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what's super cute is uh, Yeonjun and Miso's dad, they are, you know, just talking and, you know, they're drunk at this point. Miso's dad is like, did you know my daughter likes whatever type of fish? Mackerel. Whatever. Mackerel. And he's like, she doesn't need it anymore because she choked on a bone mm-hmm. and it scares her now. So she doesn't need that. And he goes, oh, huh. Well, what about, you know, spicy chicken feet? She likes that when she's stressed. And Hyunjun's just like, mm, yeah, but when she was having to pay off your debt, the amount of spicy chicken feet and spicy tteokbokki and all the other things, like, yeah, it really ruined her health. <laughs> so she doesn't eat spicy foods anymore. And then, you know, talking about the apartment or are mm-hmm. you OK with that? It's so small and something about like how the rent is done. He's like, actually, it's done like this. <laughs> Miso's dad's just like, huh. I don't know any of that. <laughs> Which just makes it cute of how much Yeonjun actually has paid attention. And these aren't things that she's like explicitly told him, mm-hmm. at least while we've been, you know, privy to what's happening. So it's either he retained this from a super long time ago or he just is so in tune with he watches her closely enough that he knows, you know Right. Where she's at. hmm At the end of all of this conversation, or Yeonjun gets the pass from Miso's dad. Mm-hmm. He's like, okay, I now accept you as my son-in-law. And they're stumbling back to the apartment, and Miso's outside going, like, where did they go? Well, and not only that, but, like, even if something hadn't happened because of her dad, you're just like, did they get hit by a car? <laughs> or, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, so she basically sees them stumbling down the road, mm-hmm. like, okay, they're alive, now I can be pissed at them. Yes, the look <laughs> on her face epic <laughs> i've definitely been that friend but i love that her dad just like tries to tell yeonjun a secret and he's like Shh, i have a secret <laughs> he's like my miso scares me <laughs> and then and then young jo- young jun goes i also have a secret she also terrifies me and then he laughs at himself because he's so tickled by this well and what's super funny is they don't understand the uh, severity of them spilling their quote secrets right very loudly <laughs> in front of me so i love it though because it it's very much a father-in-law son-in-law mm-hmm. bonding they, moment yeah. they so. have, uh, established their relationship yeah so miso's dad tells her that you know I'm going inside. I'm going to go rest. You call your future husband a cab. Mm -hmm. And so they kind of wander down the road and find a place to wait. Because she's called Yushik. Mm -hmm. um, Secretary Yang. Is it Secretary Yang? Yeah, Secretary Yang. Okay, so she's called Secretary Yang for a ride. And they're kind of sitting, just shooting the breeze a little bit. And Mm -hmm. she's still mad, but, you know. It's more for his safety right yeah you don't know where he's been and he's not answering his calls that's the worst feeling yes ever. that's a horrible feeling but as they're talking uh, he's sort of just drunkenly like spilling his affections for her mm-hmm. and he says oh, nine years ago when i saw you again i liked you so much you couldn't recognize me but i was really happy to see you perhaps i think it's been ever since then my getting to love you. I'm going to make you happy for the rest of your life. I'm going to be happy for the rest of my life thanks to you. And then he pets her head. He's just It's so such cute. a genuine gesture. Ugh. Like it's such a such a protector mm-hmm. like move to just pet somebody's head like that. Yeah. Like I'm going to care for you. I'm going to love you. And it's not to get anything out of her in that moment. Like right. he's just being honest right whereas in the past when he had expressed how he was feeling she took it as you're just being jealous and competitive right whereas this is no there there's genuine care yeah and 
and he's clearly he so uninhibited that <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's gonna we, be honest. we might be drunk but we've heard him like spill some affection onto her like this before but this is completely yeah yeah it's uninhibited different. and it's it's very sweet um so flash forward to the next day young june is looking a hot mess oh yeah my flawless brain show me my memories using my brain makes it hurt more <laughs> <laughs> mm, yes the hangover is real for young june <laughs> Um, because when he's on his way to work, you know, Secretary Young's driving, uh-huh. and they go over speed bumps, and every time he's just like, he's oh, trying no. to hold it in. Oh, no. He's like talking <laughs> to his insides. He's like, "You got to keep it together. Stay strong somehow. If I destroy the classy image I've built in thirty-three years, <laughs> <laughs> it's just so funny." He is a little bit past that, I think. Oh yes, <laughs> just just a touch. But we're at the office now. And Miso is walked in and says good morning to her office. And they all stand up and they have these super sad faces. Oh, they are so sad. They are devastated mm-hmm. in this current moment. And they tell her that, you know, they have something for her. And they all start singing Old Lang Sign in Korean. In Korean. And I was just like, oh, great. Great song, first of all. But then Jia has this plaque. It's a gratitude plaque. And she Kamsa reads up. Plaque. Yes, <laughs> but she has this whole like the engraving on it, and like for your years of service and dedication, and poor Sarah is like about to bawl her eyes out. Yes. She's crying, and then that's when Miso realizes she's having secondhand embarrassment. <laughs> she's going, oh, they don't know that I'm not leaving. Yeah, well, she hasn't announced it yet, right? So of course, because that was supposed to be her last day, and she's mm-hmm. like, well. I'm really sorry, guys. I'm I'm actually staying. And they all are like, wait, what? Because <laughs> they're like, yeah, of course you are. And then they just all just get silent and just stare at her like, what's what's the joke? Do you want to try saying that again? Yeah. Like, we heard you correctly, right? And they all, of course, run to her and they make her pinky promise that she's never going to leave them again. But then sitting at the desk, Gia has this kind of like epiphany of, Mm-hmm. Oh, you are staying. <laughs> what does that mean? Do I have a place here anymore? And <laughs> Miso is just very reassuring and that, you know, her staying with the company is completely contingent upon Gia also being there because it was sharing the burden of the workload. And I think that's when also there was that moment for Miso as well when she did make the decision to stay of like, I don't have to do everything anymore. Mm-hmm. I have somebody who helps me out, so I'm not... She got the assistant that Young Jun promised. <laughs> she, yes, she did. But then Young Jun walks in. The hangover is real at this point because he's already suffered yeah. the car ride in. Yep. And he's tried not to die. And he tries to play off that he isn't dying. Mm-hmm. And Miso's just like, Yeah, I know you are. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, she walks in and she has some soup for him some Pollock soup. Some Pollock soup and. Uh, that's when Yeonjun you know, tries to be like, you know, me being drunk was a calculated uh, move because me being perfect all the time is just, it's a burden. Of course. I needed you to see some of my flaws. <laughs> see some of my flaws. Well, she saw a lot of them. <laughs> She's known them for many years. <laughs> <laughs> and they have nothing to do with your drunkenness. <laughs> no. But then he asks, you know, how is, how's father? And she's like, well, he's in just as bad of a state as you are. Yes. So I made this soup for him and for you. Mm-hmm. Don't think that it's because I'm happy with you right now or that I'm doing it because right. I care about you. I just happened to make it. I made enough. Because, yeah, I made enough because I made it for my dad. And then she tells him, you know, you're the owner of a conglomerate. You need to think about how you're going to feel the next day if you're going to drink. Mm-hmm. He's like, yes, I am an owner of a conglomerate. But before that, I'm a woman's husband to be. Mind you, there's no proposal that has happened no. here. Well, I mean, at least not since. Not an intentional, like, she's on board with. Yeah. <laughs> the idea. <laughs> and then that's when Miso's like, oh, wait, so uh, what did you and my dad talk about? And he leans forward and he gets close and he just puts his finger up like he's going to tell her. And this goes, it's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> his finger to his lips. 
Apocalypse. Might still be a little drunk. <laughs> That's a potential. And then he immediately proceeds to tell Yushik the secret, because, you know, Yushik is, like... His only friend. His only friend. But they start discussing proposals. Mm. The mm-hmm. marriage invitation. And... Wedding pitch. S- wedding pitch. That's what it was. Wedding yeah. pitch. And so Yushik, you know, is doing his best. He goes... Well, maybe you should propose over dinner with a fancy champagne. Uh-huh. And Young June's like, the restaurant. Yeah, been there, done that. <laughs> yes. And then he goes, maybe you should rent out Yuming Land. You know, you own it. It would be really romantic, grand gesture. You see it in K dramas all the time. Oh yeah, you see it all the time with CEOs in K dramas. Mm-hmm. Young June's like, been there, done that. <laughs> done that one too. <laughs> and then he goes, all these grand gestures. You know, maybe just. Maybe just propose casually while she's not expecting it in a really sincere moment. And Young Jun's just like, I have tried all of these things, <laughs> sir. You are un. You're not worth You're my time. You're zero right now. help. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, he goes, Maybe after all of this, she doesn't want to marry you. No, no, yeah, she definitely wants to marry you because mm-hmm, Young Jun's mm-hmm. like shooting him daggers again. Well, and then he's like, well, maybe if you hadn't been so strong with your feelings and pushing bulldozer. this on your bulldozer. Yeah. <laughs> you sexy bulldozer. You sexy wedding pitch bulldozer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you, Sheik. He's the best. <laughs> but then Young Jun starts to ask, like, you know, well, then how did you do it if you're such a, you know, genius? Well, just the best part of that was is, you know, he calls him the sexy wedding pitch bulldozer. Uh-huh. And he goes, oh, that was thoughtless of me. And he just goes, Yoon Joon looks at him and goes, thoughtless Puck, what did you do to propose? And he goes, just <laughs> yeah. like, I wasn't thoughtless. I was very romantic. <laughs> <laughs> but his proposal. It actually is very romantic. He had taken his ex-wife. They were in Paris and he were proposed underneath the Eiffel Tower. Mm-hmm. And Yoon Joon just stares at him and he's like, underneath an iron lattice tower? that's romantic and he's like it's paris (laughs) like just the city itself sets the mood oh yes it's a whole thing and of course young june doesn't know anything about romance so why would he know that the eiffel tower in paris is like iconic yeah it is known for being a romantic spot Mm -hmm. in the entire world and he was like you know because it uh, Yushik's proposal was something along the lines of like I want you to shine by my side forever in and the city of lights you shine the brightest yes 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 I want you to shine by my side forever and that's when uh, Yoon Joon just was like yeah well she's not by your side anymore it looks so like she didn't shine by your side forever. that didn't work <laughs> <laughs> poor Yushik oh He's he like, tries oh, I miss my wife or my ex-wife yes <laughs> poor guy is this where he decides? This is where he's brainstorming. Yep, Yeonjun decides to brainstorm of the different places he could take Miso to propose. And he's like, I could do the Colise- uh, yeah, the Coliseum. No. Wait, wasn't that later, To Marshall. No. Because then he goes, oh, I could do uh, the Great Wall of China. Now that's too pedestrian. And he goes, Las Vegas. A city as bright and fatally charming as myself. Oh, yep, yep, mm-hmm. you're right. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I gotta <laughs> read more. Okay. And then Yoon Joon books a trip all by himself <laughs> to Las Vegas. Yes, which, okay, for non Americans, maybe they don't know like the stigmas around Vegas. Yes, that's very possible. But you don't go to Vegas to be romantic. Mm-mm. You go to Vegas because you want to A. Gamble, B, drink, mm-hmm. C, go to a strip club, and then you are so drunk that you just get married at a chapel because you're already there. They literally it's have Elvis. they literally have drive through chapels because people mm-hmm. get drunk and get married and get married all the time. It is not a place of romance. It is a place of debauchery. It is <laughs> yes. No. If you want romance, if you are not American and you are looking for a place to propose, think New York City. Mm-hmm think like seattle think yeah. mountaintops of colorado do not go to vegas and vegas is not it it or is even dirty like, and there are people that you just, don't want to make eye contact with there. right well or even like florida go to the beach in florida yeah you know i mean the whole the whole little arm of the of florida before it goes down into the peninsula is the gulf of mexico right the sand is beautiful there the water's warm it's, it's not like California where they get that Arctic water mm-hmm. where it's cold. It's warm down in Florida. So yeah, there's some there are many other options here. Rent a yacht. Yeah. 
if you're going to fly someone halfway across the world to propose, just rent a yacht. Yeah. Or, you know, go to Europe. <laughs> or, <yeah. laughs> That's where we go for romance. We go to Paris. <laughs> Sarah and Secretary Young, you know, they think they're being coy and discreet. And oh my goodness. I have secondhand embarrassment from this exchange. It is rough. It's a bit much. But, Hilarious. You know. Love it. Yeah. In real life, though. Please stop. Yeah, just don't. Don't do it. We beg you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there's zero tact. No. Going on there making hard eyes at each other across the room. It's not even like they're next to each other. And giggling. Like normal yeah it's not even silent no well because yeah she's looking at him and she's like biting her lip and i know twirling her it's hair very awkward and he's loving it and all smirky and uh, she's standing grand. at the printer and he's mm-hmm. at his desk and, and then as she's collecting her papers she, she sees this sheet print <laughs> off Sarangeyo, which means i, I love, love you, you. <laughs> and so she's just like oh I need to step outside for some air. It's so hot. And then she looks, gives him like this look of, you better be coming with me. Well, she flips her hair and goes, yeah. wow. I'm going to go up to the rooftop to cool off. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, oh, looks like I'm getting a call from my mother. I she better t- go. Yeah. Excuse me. And, <laughs> and then the Secretary time, Yang. Though, Secretary uh, Jang is looking. Jang. Jang, yes, thank you. He's looking back and forth. And, and he's just like, oh let it end yeah me out of my misery yeah i'm throwing up in my mouth mm. but they leave he stands up like do, do they think they're being secretive because he's like <laughs> that's not it he's like wow that's a lot of effort but it starts this conversation about you know people dating people in the office and someone asks guinam like you know are you dating and jia very excitedly turns around to hear mm-hmm. his answer and he says, yes, I am interested in someone, and it's my work. There's nothing else to say. Yeah, and Gia's face just kind of falls. And She's sad. a little bit deflated. Yeah. It is very sad. But she knows this. Yes. But she just gets back to her desk with Miso, and she's just like, hmm, okay. <laughs> it's the, there's a little bit of an Eeyore moment. Yeah. I'm yeah, like, the rain cloud is above her head. Oh, it's so sad. <laughs> So Miso is called into Young Jun's office. Well, she takes him some contracts mm-hmm. and the next week's schedule. <laughs> Young Jun, clear my schedule for next week. Very so, confidently. Yeah, like this is how it can happen. She's like, excuse me? And he goes, well, as far as I know, there's nothing that can't be rescheduled, but you and I are going to Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. She's like, Why? He's like, well, it's obvious. We're going on holiday together. Just you and me. And she goes, no, you can't do that. And just totally pops his balloon of happiness and, yes. like, excitement. And she's like, we can't. You have too much work that needs to be done. And it's just been, like, people have just found out about us dating. We if can't. you're slacking off, it's going to just get worse. Right. So she's saving his image. Mm-hmm. With, she maybe she it's wants not even, to go to Vegas too. Who yeah, knows? It's not even her own. It's not even self preservation. It's just that she knows people are talking about mm-hmm. you know the strength of the company with you know the dating scandal, and so she's trying to protect him. Well, and then she tells that uh, Young Jun that she's going to be taking Jia to dinner and Sarah and Sarah because she, earlier she had realized she had never thanked them for. Just being good Defending friends. her honor. Yeah. And so she's like, we are going to go to dinner and... Probably going to drink. And he gets a little... He's so passive aggressive. Yeah. Oh, so you can go to... Di- you can't go on a vacation with me, but you can go to dinner with them. She's like... Those aren't the same things. No. Don't even try me. <laughs> and she just is like, you know, is that okay? And he's like, well, yeah, I guess. And she's like, okay, thank you. And he's just like... He was trying to get her to be like, oh, it's probably not okay. And mm-hmm. she's just like, cool, you didn't say it. I'm leaving. Goodbye. Have a good night. <laughs> they are out having Thanks. drinks. Mm-hmm. They're gushing over Miso's relationship. They think it's so cute. When well, they want the tea. Oh, yeah. What girlfriends don't want the tea about their friends? Exactly. New love or whatever it may be. And, you know, they're going back and forth about, you know, who liked who first, who, who, um, Well, they ask the confessed. first question, yeah, who, who approached who, and Misa gets all shy, and she goes, well, it was the vice chairman. 
and she says it all coyly <laughs> and then they just kind of keep making fun of her about it until she's like okay enough's enough mm, stop now <laughs> So they start talking a little bit. You know, she tries to divert a little bit. And she goes, so Sarah, how's that hero man of yours? And she gets a little... She she She's doesn't ready. just spill the tea. She's, like, dumping it on their heads. And Misa's like, that's enough. Okay, <laughs> calm down. Talking about how, you know, they've kissed, and then they've kissed deeply, and then they've dot, dot, dot. <laughs> and Misa's just like, yeah, you can stop now. Yeah, I don't need to know that much about you, girl. Like, I was it like, you don't need to be so detailed. Yeah, exactly. Also, you're in public. This is not the type of, co- like, right. place to have that conversation. Right, exactly. They ask Gia if she's had anyone that she's interested in, and she's like, yeah, but my crush isn't interested in anything but work, so it's kind of sad. And Sarah's just like, well, then be more forward. Be proactive, girl. Be Come like on. me. Go get what you want. <laughs> and and to, an, to an extent, I'm with that. Yeah, like, I mean... Make your intentions known. Right. There's no reason not to. The worst that can happen is, like, sorry, I don't feel the same way. At least then you can move on. Yeah, well, and, like, I mean, there's something to be said about, like, the cat and mouse thing. Mm -hmm. Because the the pursuit is part of, like, the beauty of the man and woman relationship. Mm -hmm. At the same time, though, if it's been dragging on for long enough, there has to be a breaking point. Right. And if the man's not getting the picture, maybe just drop not a hint but be explicitly clear yeah and say like this is what this has been to me is this what it is to you i need yeah for your own sanity yeah and to not waste your own time right well my brother has told me that in the past he's like he goes guys are dumb (laughs) okay this is a guy saying it so it's my brother so i'm blaming him (laughs) but he's like we're dumb we don't pick up on stuff if you want something you have to be so clear with it you have to tell us what you want my only response to that was you better listen then so young june is doing what all of us do whenever we're at a loss for ideas and he is searching the interwebs (laughs) (laughs) for proposal ideas youtube (laughs) (laughs) and then he's (laughs) his his dream board um (laughs) so he's googling different ideas he's coming up with things like love actually mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, the, the notepad and uh-huh. just the little phrases and he's like why would you waste that much time just write it all down hey, oh, so much paper is wasted and this is childish yes but it's it, you know he's been consulting all of these other sources rather than just like thinking about working it. it out himself mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. but um so back to the restaurant well, Miso. then he looks at the time Oh. And he realizes it's been hours. Since he heard from her. Since he heard from Miso. Yeah. And then we jump yeah. back to the restaurant. Back to the restaurant. Miso is very drunkenly stumbling toward the restroom, but still somehow very poised. Well, because especially those compared heels. to Sarah. Oh, gosh. She's trying to eat soup, and she's using the wrong end of the spoon. <laughs> well, we've seen Sarah before when this she's is, inebriated, right. and it's not beautiful. No, but they're just like, I think she's drunk. I think she's drunk and she's like i'm not drunk <laughs> every drunk person's lying uh, yeah i feel but fine then, yeah. but then yeah miso is yeah very well poised and stumbling Especially in those shoes but yikes so young june calls her phone while she stepped away from the table and the other two of course you know get to it first and they are also very drunk mm-hmm and they are saying things like, you know, of course the vice chairman would want to check up on on his woman and right. things like this. And um, they say, you know, you better come get her quick because she's so drunk. He's wasted. <laughs> he's just like, wasted? Yeah, he what? gets a little concerned. And, um, you know, then they hang up because she's coming back. And he does. He shows up. And they are so tickled. Even Miso. Well, is... This is how you know she is definitely gone. Yeah. She sees him and she gets this huge smile. She's gushing over the fact that he is there. See, he extremely, extremely loves me. I know. It's kind of sweet. So adorable. Because she's, it's like childish Right, love. we see this. Yeah. But then the girls are like, okay, well, our, you're not here as vice chairman. You're here as our co-worker's boyfriend. So they start addressing him by his name informally. 
well not informally well, but like, to call from a boss to call yeah to call your boss by their name would be completely inappropriate oh yeah and but they, it was a formal way to call his name yeah yeah and they take his wallet <laughs> and they take his watch, watch? and they're like you can't leave until we leave i mean you're talking probably like twenty thousand dollars worth of items just in the items themselves not Minimum. including all of the platinum cards mm. inside anyway but so okay then we cut to yung jun and miso are walking miso's stumbling all over giggling mm-hmm. and um he's like are you happy and she's like yeah this is the first time i got to drink until i got this drunk <laughs> she's like i always had to be on call for you mm-hmm. and then she gets a little like like drunk people do they're giggly and then they switch and they're like that makes me angry by the way <laughs> like i always had to get you drinks and you never got me a drink mm-hmm. and he's like what so you hate me and she goes no i like you <laughs> such a drunk thing <laughs> she's so honest uh, although can i just say that young june wearing her purse is adorable he, uh yes he, he rocks the purse very very well <laughs> better than most yes <laughs> yeah pretty it's much a all. satchel it's a satchel <laughs> So we see Miso the next morning in the exact same position that Young Jun was the day before. Very hungover, makeup, makeup smeared, <laughs> head pounding. Trying to remember what happened the night before. Yep. Knowing who probably dropped him off her off in her bed. <laughs> <laughs> well then she's walking into the office and Sarah and Gia walk up to her and they're like We're we're dead. Yeah. We're gonna die. And she's like, Are your insides okay? And she's like, Oh no, they're fine. We just have his wallet and his watch. (laughs) Yeah, I forgot about that part. (laughs) They go in, they return it, and they're like, I'm so sorry. And he's like, well, it's okay as long as you had fun. But that image once was enough. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to see it again. That was really gracious of him. So Young Jun returns the favor, offers Miso some dried Pollock soup, Mm -hmm. and she looks like... (laughs) She looks like a child being scolded for having her hand in the cookie jar before dinner. (laughs) You know, they kind of have their little back and forth. And Mm -hmm. then he ends up asking her to just keep the drunkenness to a minimum in the future. And she goes, right, because I'm a representative of the company. Anything I do reflects you. And he goes, no, it's because you're my woman. And I don't want to see you get hurt. And she she just kind of, you know, smiles to herself. She's like, like, I'll enjoy the soup now. (laughs) (laughs) It's okay now. Well, then... We cut to Jia going and getting a bottle of water. And Queen Nam is in there as well. And I don't know if he's doing like ginseng or something like that in a mug. You couldn't tell. Um, and she takes a drink and he's like, are you okay? It seemed like you were pretty drunk yesterday. And she's like, how did you know I drank? Can you still smell it on me? You know? No. He's like, you made a video on my phone. She's like, What? instant panic yeah and he's like oh well if you don't remember don't worry about it he tries to savor the embarrassment very sweetly yes and she's like no i need to know if i left something and it is a video of jia asking queen um are you only ever just gonna work and are you never gonna date (laughs) say that you'll date me yeah and it the phone pans to him and he's just like i think you had enough to drink (laughs) no just just say that you're going to date me and I'm going to leave this video as evidence. <laughs> Poor Gia's just like, crap. My life is over. Well, and he's so gracious with her because he mm-hmm. even gives her an out. He doesn't want her to feel embarrassed about it because he does care about her. Yeah. Whether or not it's in a romantic sense, we haven't established from his end. Right. But he's still very, um, very kind to her about it. He would consider her more of a friend than anybody else yeah. in the office. Yeah, and he... You know, other people, he might have made a point to make, like, clear walls, like, no. But, you mm. know, he was he was holding her heart gently. So yes, that's it, a great way it to put was, it. It was sweet of him. He tells her, you know, like, your joke was really funny. Yeah. And she just stands there, and our girl gets it and is proactive. And she's like, that wasn't a joke. Like, I think I like you. I don't know when it started, if it was the baby tomatoes, if it was you helping Taping me with... the shredded paper. Right. Or have you mispronounced the... Kuoboru. Kuoboru. And she's like, I don't know when it started, but I, I think I like you. And he's like, we should talk later. Which she takes as, he's accepted my confession. We're going to talk about it. We're going to mm-hmm. be dating by the end of the day. We're going to be a couple. And we fast forward through the day. Mm-hmm. Guinam has brought her this, you know, a cup of coffee, a cup of the instant coffee. 
and you know tells her that he really feels like she's a good person she even kept his secret she was super kind to him all of this time however wah wah um he can't accept her feelings toward him and that's simply because of the fact that he is living the life that he is she likes to drink caramel lattes caramel macchiatos Mm -hmm. he drinks instant coffee from a vending machine she eats out all the time and goes out with friends and drinks for fun he only eats out on his birthday right when he's like i i'm fine to live that way and work hard to accomplish my goals right but i'm not free Mm -hmm. and i i will not do that to you her heart is being held very gently so she even offers to match his lifestyle though Mm -hmm. but he tells her you know i don't have fun this way you don't need to live this way and it's very very sad because you can tell he clearly does he he reciprocates but he really likes her yeah so they're he's both so focused on his goals that he's like letting her slip out of his hands and it's so sad so madame Choi and her husband are back at the house mm-hmm. she's wearing this french skincare mask which i kind of want to try but absolutely she's saying it'll help her skin return to its 20s and he says that's ridiculous because that would be like cutting 40 years off of her life and she said he says you shouldn't be so greedy (laughs) she's so mean if i were greedy would i have met and married a man like you (laughs) look at my body look at my household like do you know how many men wanted me i settled (laughs) ouch but at the end of this little exchange they actually get word from an employee who Mm -hmm. is explaining that miso and young june are dating and it's floating around the company we cut to young june talking to yushik Mm -hmm. um he's like you know this whole proposal thing is stressing me out don't bring up anything that has to do with proposals around me. Like, I can't deal with it right now. Never. And Yushik. In true Yushik fashion. He cannot help himself. <laughs> the pun like, master. Oh, he's like, oh, yes, you know, since you're a pro, such a pro, good job. <laughs> <laughs> you know, since you like pro professional basketball, <laughs> you know, and he just goes, suddenly I feel the need to, uh, hire somebody for the president spot that has some sense and just like shuts him down and Yushik's just like I will you know cut back on my sense of fun and Mm -hmm. become more sensible and then as uh, Young Jun leaves he just is giggling and is like so pleased with himself. so tickled by the whole situation. (laughs) But as Young Jun leaves he gets a phone call for his from his mom and says mom going hey I need you to come over. He shows up and his mom goes okay are you and miso dating like she doesn't even like waste time she's like i just i need to know yeah she knows he's a busy guy yeah and young jun's like yeah and i'm gonna marry her Mm -hmm. like i love her and his mom is just like "Mm -hmm." and you're like here it is here's Here's the the moment that she's gonna disapprove of miso and he's like well you like her and she's like it's not that like i want her by your side i've always trusted her always admired her but i'm just concerned and her concern is coming from a place of you and your brother just made up and it seemed like he had feelings for me so and well I, he told her he was gonna marry her right too yeah several episodes ago and so she's like i just i i can't go through that again of you two not having a relationship especially since you just started it and then Songyeon appears like out of thin air and he goes that's not a problem don't worry about it we're cool we're cool it's fine and he explains that, you know, my feelings came from a place of thinking that Miso was this girl that had been beside me in my darkest hour. Mm-hmm. And it was Young Jun. He's the one who, you know, really has claim to her because of their history. It wasn't my story. It was his. And he basically just gives him his blessing. And he's very sweet about it. Yeah, it's not even a place of spite or, you know, it seems like it's coming from a place of healing. And right, that there's no not, reservation. It's not your typical second lead syndrome of, yeah. I'm giving her up. Right. I'm because not, this is for her better. Yeah, allowing you. It's just, you know, you guys are clearly the better fit for one another. And I... And my, what I thought I felt yeah, it wasn't, wasn't actually real. Right, yeah. Um, I love their conversation in the courtyard. Yes. It is completely a Hyung and his Dong Sang. Yes. It is such a great conversation. Interacting with one another. It's the first time that Young Jun really looks to him as an older brother, I felt mm-hmm. like. So they're just having this really honest and sweet conversation. And Song Yun asks, you know, have you proposed yet? And um, Young Jun's just like, you know, I've been brainstorming and I'm not coming up with Can't anything. And so he says, you know, 
just don't copy what other people have done and don't try to show off. And then Young Jun says, well, then what should I do? And I love that moment. It's so subtle, but it is him looking for advice from his looking older brother. Looking for advice from his older brother. And that is such a, a completed growth our... arc. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was a good moment. I got excited. It was such a great moment. So um, he tells him, he tells Young Jun to focus on Miso. Mm-hmm. Focus on what she likes and what he wants to do for her. And as you think of these things, and your answer is going to appear. So he takes that, and he goes home, and he thinks about it. Mm -hmm. He's staring out the window, looking very pensive. And he picks picks up his phone, gives her a call, and says, Kimmy, so I need you to come over right now. I have something I need to talk to you about. And uh, just so everyone knows, this entire next part, swooning was happening for me <laughs> i was like f- i've seen this before and i was just going, oh my god <laughs> i love it so miso shows up first of all she's wearing like one of the most beautiful dresses yes that she has worn this entire series and this show is seven years old and that sh- that dress still checks out for me granted Little black dress y'all yeah. it does it every time can't go wrong um and so she shows up she looks adorable and she shows up and she's starting to walk up towards the house and she notices that it is covered in candles like there are candles just lining the walk all the way up um and she gets to this first little table and there's a bowl just filled with caramels yes and it's like spilling onto the table and she just smiles and picks one up and she keeps walking and she finds another table and it has a notebook and it has a little tiny hardworking cow and a tiny please remember me dog it, uh, so precious so we're, we're seeing all these great elements of things that mm-hmm. miso likes and so the notebook she reads it and it says miso and she flips the next page i prepared a classic proposal because i am a classic man who prepared it hand made <laughs> um if it's for you i can become childish quickly come my woman Aww. and she opens the door and walks inside and young jun is sitting and playing the piano and then sings a whole song for her again serenades or and, you know you get this whole montage of you know the different points of their relationship throughout the whole show and um when he finishes playing he comes and stands in front of her and misa's like well what's all of this about suddenly yeah. like and you know she's tearing up like she knows what's coming oh, yeah she's not dumb and yoon joon comes up to her and tells her you know you said that you liked it when I sang to you, and I want to sing to you every night. I want you by my ni- by my side every night forever, basically. Mm-hmm. And then the best part of all of this is he he becomes very very real. Like he's been real this whole time, but he tells her, "You know, I'm not somebody, or I'm not normally someone who asks asks for permission, right? But I'm politely and romantically asking for your permission." And then gets down on one knee and has this music box mm-hmm. that's holding a beautiful ring i want the music box as well sounds awesome um but then he says will you marry me and she doesn't even like have to say a word she's just like she's not her tears are about to fall out of her eyes and she's just like "Uh uh-huh and then he goes so after five after the fifth proposal i get an answer (laughs) it only took five and she's like well the first one was me Mm -hmm. like i proposed first um but then you know we have our i love yous that get exchanged a really sweet kiss and then it blacks out. And the next thing we hear is... Knock, knock, knock. Yeah, and it's Yushik, and he opens the door, and he's like, what? Who? And it's Young Jun, and he is... Looking very miffed. He is completely lost. Yeah. And he's just standing there, and Yushik's just like, why are you here? And Young Jun just goes, why? Why do you think she's like this? Kimmy So, why do you think she's like this? <laughs> Fast forward again, or we cut again to a different scene at a dinner table filled with Kim Miso's family as well as Young Jun's family. And it's her proclaiming, I can't get married like this. End of episode. Do, 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 do. Wanna be your girlfriend, yeah. <laughs> oh, what a, what a way to end an episode. What a terrible cliffhanger, but also effective way to get people to tune in for the finale of your show. Oh, 
So character of the hour. Oh. I ooh. Mine is Queen Um. Ah, uh, yeah, he's up there. He was so sincere and honest and, and genuine. Um vulnerable with her. Mm-hmm. And I just Protective feel, even. Yeah, and I just feel like he is understanding that love is not about things, it's about the person. I just don't think he's allowed himself to put that into practice yet. Yes. He would be number one for me as well. I think number two would actually be Sonyeon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, you know what? No, I've. there's not going to be a problem between my brother and I. Bros before girls. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but then the relationship actually being mended yes. and actually being allowed to grow and you know allow them to work on it together because even in it like he mentions he's like yeah I've been getting help you know and just that just that scene of them of the two brothers talking it was just very like you were hoping that would happen yeah and you don't always see that like especially with the you know perceived villain or the mm-hmm. bully mm-hmm. for them to arrive there was a really big deal i agree so yeah i i, I do love queen on though those was, two they, uh, they 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 won the hour yes they did <laughs> so all right one more one more una mas una mas we can we, we can, can do, do spanish <laughs> we can do Korean, apparently. we're trilingual not really <laughs> maybe one day we're like one and one third lingual <laughs> <laughs> something like that <laughs> All right, oh. come back next time and we will wrap up What's Wrong with Secretary Kim? Okay. We're almost done. I'm yeah. crazy. Crazy. All right. Like what you're hearing? Go ahead and hit that follow button so that you don't miss out on any new episodes. Thanks for listening to The K Drama Show with Ashley and Kim. We'll see you next time.